Welcome back to our final segment of our Karnan on which we're talking about the rule of law in the Bahamas and we've looked at several aspects, especially attention uh, focusing on the, both the criminal and the civil side and the steps that have been taken. But in terms of the attitudes that Bahamians have to law and order, it does seem to me that we need to I believe bring into greater play the media in helping us to create a better, a more positive outlook among the general public in terms of law and order. I think that by and large the vast majority of Bahamians are law-abiding citizens. Mm -hmm. um, most people that I interact with are very polite, courteous, um, and display the qualities which we are renowned for throughout the world. A small minority of people display deviant um, behavioral features. Those are the, the people that we need to target before they become criminals. One of the problems that we are faced with is that um, the recommendation of um, national service for young people that was made in the 90s was never no, acted on. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have the resources of, of the United States to provide the kinds of um, sports facilities that are commonplace um, in, in every state. I might just come back from um, Fort Lauderdale with um, my son, who was playing with the water polo team, and they were at an aquatic complex which was part of a, an elementary school, and it had three Olympic-sized swimming pools adjacent to each other, with a practice pool as an additional pool. Our national stadium doesn't have that type of facility. Yes, mm -hmm. So that, that, that gives you the contrast between the resources which are readily deployed in our richest neighbor mm -hmm. um, in the neighborhood uh, of states um, in the hemisphere. So we've got to find a way of building capacity and passing on the values and mores um, in sport, the sporting arena, in social interaction with children. Mm -hmm. uh, and it may well be that the government has to, to bite the bullet and start a, a national youth service program. But and even with that, you... And, and uh, that's a long-term goal. Long-term, but uh, where do you see the role of the media in terms of helping in this area? I think the media just reports the news, you know. They, they will report the murders because it's, it's news. What you don't see in the newspapers, which we probably ought to see more of, is the good news that happens mm -hmm. in this country. Um, and, and it just doesn't, doesn't, make, the doesn't make the news. It, it, it always is second fiddle mm -hmm. to the negative mm -hmm. crime that has happened the night before. And that is really, I, I believe Mr. Mark Antonis and Ed Fields in a recent talk show, um, when it was an interview, on one of the radio stations, so that they even stopped distributing national newspapers at Atlantis because they didn't want yes to see to on be the front page a, on the front page, page with this bad news, was, mm -hmm. and that's that actually is something that should give newspaper editors pause for concern. Um, yes, they have a duty to um, publish the news, but they don't need to injure the um, Bahamas' reputation. Mm -hmm. And there are other news stories that could very easily go on the front, front page, page and let the curious visitor see the bad news after they've yeah, looked at the good. Mm -hmm. But once you've seen that on the front page, you really don't feel like right. going any further than the newspaper. Mm -hmm. so 
yes, they should do more. Um, and there's a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of sports activities going on. There's a lot of um, educational stuff that's mm -hmm. going on. Um, and, and we just have to celebrate and learn to celebrate the good that <laughs> happens in our community. I also feel that the media, I agree with that, but the media also, I think, should be helping to disseminate to the wider public the rights and privileges that citizens have because um, I think uh, there are very few programs that will seek to itemize what's available and what you are entitled to as a Bahamian. I think that that is true, but the primary responsibility for disseminating that information ought to be with the professional bodies that govern the different professions that give service to the community mm -hmm. so that they in conjunction with the newspapers are able to have a strategy for educating the public. public. Mm -hmm. um, it's but a I matter think of, the of, of civic mindedness and mm -hmm. civic responsibility being shared across different sectors. And the, the, the print media and the um, other forms of, 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 of media like television and radio ought to be more engaged and more engaging not only with the public but with these different bodies, bodies. ensuring that um, we as a public are much better educated um, about different things in our community. And um, for instance, with, with health, um, lifestyle, lifestyle changes can be promoted using um, um, different media, yeah. uh, having different doctors come on to, to explain mm -hmm. why you shouldn't use this type of food Good. or uh, that this method of cooking and um, what you should be doing uh, for exercise, uh, how you can um, use your time um, better with exercise. These are things that we don't really think about, but they affect the bottom line in terms of what we spend as a country on health care. Mm -hmm. Um, and also affect the quality of life. And it affects the quality of life. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we, we can find the money to provide the facilities, but ultimately those facilities being used a lot is a bad sign about it's how we are living. Mm -hmm. and, and we ought to be moving in a direction in which we are explaining to people mm -hmm. that you should walk you should um, be encouraged to exercise, you should be encouraged to eat healthily, you should be encouraged not to uh, engage in, in harmful uh, activities that, that affect your health, particularly mm -hmm. as you get older in life. But if we could come back to a minute for, to um, the, the question of the law and order, and the earlier you said you felt that most Bahamians are law-abiding, but do you think that they have a, a positive attitude towards the rule of law? Most people, I think, do. They have a sense of right and wrong. And most people are innately fair. At least I, that's what I sense mm -hmm. with them. And they may become incensed by some unfairness that they perceive. But it is the the fact that they are incensed by unfairness, which is the measure of their regard for justice. justice. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and in this high regard for justice, this puts the pressure then on the government, whichever party is in power, to work assiduously to improve the quality of the system so that access and results are more readily available. Yes, I mean, what, what really um, tipped the scales um, when we came into office was that we, um, at the Attorney General's office, started to um, focus on collecting data so that we know what is going on in the office. Um, and that data is important because you, 
when you're able to see it, you're able to say, well, this is, this is not anecdotal. Mm -hmm. These are the numbers. Um, and the managers in the office are then confronted with reality. Mm -hmm. And then we are able then to define what problems are mm -hmm. and to work towards reducing the problem and eradicating it. Mm -hmm. And by focusing on our figures in the office, we are able, because we are the primary um, enforcement agency in the courts, we are able to say the, these are the cases that are before the courts, these are the dates that are set for them, these are the matters that were finished during this year, mm -hmm. these are the matters which weren't, these are the cases that have been adjourned. Um, and so we're able to, to track what is happening and then to say to the government, our colleagues in government, look, if we don't have the resources deployed, we are in a crisis mm -hmm. and the crisis is going to get worse. So we were able, um, just by producing the raw facts, to persuade colleagues that something desperately needed to be done. And we provided the money to ensure that the courts were um, renovated and made available for the Supreme Court. And we continued with the um, Ansbacher renovation. Mm -hmm. That's now complete. So we've got a brand brand new Ansbacher facility for the Supreme Court, as well as the additional temporary courts that we were working on. So it really now is in the, so so it the is ball is in the court. In the courts, and, we, and, and we are not attempting to interfere with the functioning of either the Chief Justice or any of the mm. judges okay. in the courts. Right. All we are saying to them is, we understand the difficulties that you were faced with. You needed the resources. These are the resources that we've provided. These uh, ought to um, ensure that you are able to function in the way that the law requires you to function. So from where you sit now, the public should have a reasonable expectation that the quality will improve. They, 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 they should have that expectation. I believe that they do. Right. Well, thank you very much for coming and enlightening us, and I hope that our viewers would appreciate the information that has been given. Thank you, and good night to our viewers, and God bless. Thank you for inviting me.